Ambassador Saurabh Kumar, Secretary, Ministry of External Affairs, High Commissioner Kartikeyan, friends. I'm on my first visit to Fiji, uh, not just as External Affairs Minister, it's my first visit ever. And after two days, I'm wondering why it took me so long. So uh, it's really been a very, very, uh, for me, a very interesting visit. Uh, a lot of things that I can relate to, a lot of things that I learnt from being here. So what I'd like to do today is perhaps talk a little bit about my visit because by doing so I think you will get a sense of what is happening between India and Fiji. I'd also like to talk briefly to all of you about what is happening in India because when I travel abroad and meet the Indian community, uh, that's something that I always do. Now, as the High Commissioner uh, told you, uh, I am here uh, partly because a visit from an Indian Foreign Minister was overdue. Uh, but I am also here because uh, the Vishwa Hindi Sammelan is taking place uh, right now uh, in Nandi. It's something which probably would have happened a few years earlier but for the COVID. Uh, but still, uh, I must say uh, from uh, the meeting yesterday uh, that we really got uh, a very, very fulsome cooperation uh, from the government of Fiji, a very strong participation by the Fijian Indian community uh, and really a very good global response. I think we have uh, Hindi scholars and pundits from uh, more than, I think, 30 countries. Uh, so, uh, now I begin with the uh, Vishwa Hindi Samele because in many ways it's illustrative today of what India means to the world. The fact that there is virtually no country in the world without an Indian community of some size. The reality that this community spreading across the world has achieved its own uh, successes, uh, its own, I would say, uh, milestones, and is today an enormous asset, both to India, to the country where they live, as well as to the world. Now, in an era of globalization, uh, it is reasonable to expect that this will only increase with time because uh, I think all of you would readily appreciate uh, that today in the world, uh, the world needs talent, world needs skills, world needs professionals, world needs mobility. Because where the demand is, is not where the demographics is. And how to balance that out today is one of the big developments uh, in the global economy. But I also mention all this to you because uh, at home uh, there has been enormous change, there has been great growth, uh, but uh, we have come through uh, a very, very uh, difficult time like the entire world uh, dealing uh, with the COVID. Uh, but we have come through stronger because I think uh, we handled the COVID uh, with a great deal of thought. Uh, with a very sound strategy, uh, with capabilities which many doubted we had, with a degree of self-assurance uh, which I think even surprised ourselves. So today the picture really is of an India very much on a recovery path, uh, quite confident about handling what is clearly a difficult global situation because the world has been impacted by three years of COVID, by a year of the Ukraine conflict and all the uh, complications of that, by other stresses, some of which predated COVID, by debt, by trade disruptions, by climate change. So it's, it's a messy world out there, but it's a world which an India is today looking at with a degree of self-assurance and a degree of self-confidence. Uh, and that is also the perspective which I bring to bear uh, uh, in, in relationship to Fiji. 
Now, uh, at the uh, Vishwa Hindi Sammelan yesterday, we were very honored by the uh, presence of the President of Fiji uh, at the inauguration, by the fact that the uh, Prime Minister of Fiji hosted the welcome uh, event in the evening, by the presence of a number of leading members of the cabinet, and as I said, uh, by, the, uh, by representatives of the uh, Fijian Indian community itself. Uh, today, uh, I've had, uh, I think, a fairly long and certainly very detailed uh, discussion on the future of our relationship uh, with uh, Prime Minister Rambuka as well as his senior cabinet colleagues. And the message that I brought to him from uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi was that India's interests in the Indo-Pacific today are very substantial. Uh, whether you look at it uh, as economic or trade interests, whether you look at the diaspora, or whether you look at the politics uh, and the security and the strategy, or the technology. Uh, so when we look at the Indo-Pacific, uh, we certainly see Fiji as a very important partner, a partner with whom there is a historic link with whom there is an established relationship. And the challenge for us as the two governments is how do we refresh this relationship? How do we make it more up to date? How do we address the issues which may have arisen, especially in the last three years? Because there's no country in the world which can say the, you know, the last three years has not been transformational for them. Transformational both in a challenging sense and in a sense of uh, uh, discovering new capabilities. So our, our meeting today spent a lot of time uh, addressing uh, how to expand our development partnership. Uh, from the uh, side of Prime Minister Rambuka, I suddenly uh, uh, heard very uh, clearly and loudly how much the Fijian Indian community and their contributions are valued. Uh, how keen the Fijian government is today in actually upgrading uh, our relationship and intensify cooperation. So we discussed a number of areas. I, I think uh, they move, you know, range from health and education to uh, sustainability to development partnership to business to investment uh, to issues pertaining to the sugarcane industry. I mean, nothing which would come as a surprise to you. But I would certainly say the, the intent uh, was to have a very open talk uh, about what uh, we could do for each other and with each other. Uh, and uh, I leave uh, with a sense of an of a agenda in an outline. You know. I, I got a clear picture of where Fiji wants to go, what are their priorities, where they think India can be helpful. And my task going back uh, after reporting to Prime Minister Modi is really to fashion an agenda that how do I take this relationship forward? Uh, how do we, uh, you know, where do we invest our resources and energies? What is it we prioritize? What, where is it that our capabilities can be useful? Uh, and our own experiences with different countries uh, really working together can make a very substantial difference. They can make a substantial difference in terms of projects. They can make a big difference in terms of uh, capabilities, uh, exchange of experiences, training. So, so it's a fairly sort of, uh, I would say, hopeful, optimistic picture. But then still, I would say, looking at the future, a somewhat unformed picture that I'm uh, sharing with you uh, at uh, this point of time. I, of course, uh, in, in all of this, uh, took advantage uh, uh, to see as much of Fiji as I could. Uh, I attended the parliament briefly. Uh, I, I was actually witness to a, a speech in Hindi being given by a member of parliament. Uh, I yesterday uh, visited the uh, Sri Shiva Subramanyam Swami Kovil. Uh, I went to the gallery. Today, the 
uh, saw the the Girmit Gallery, which uh, we have supported, uh, and uh, y you know I would have wished I had more time uh, and perhaps been able to travel to a few more places. Uh, but certainly, uh, for someone who's here uh, on a visit for the first time, uh, I can say that uh, I leave uh, with a with a good sense uh, of the state of this society, the state of the community, uh, the state of our relationship, and that is really uh, why I came. Now, if I can switch gears and speak a little bit uh, about what is happening in India. Uh, as I said, for everybody in the world, uh, 2020, 2021, 2022 have been extraordinarily difficult years. Because uh, when they called COVID a once-in-a-century pandemic, believe me, they really made it. The last time the world saw anything like this was during the Spanish flu, which was almost exactly a hundred years ago. Now, uh, some of you may know this. Uh, perhaps, uh, I mean, at that time of the Spanish flu, records were not kept so well. But it's just generally agreed that probably uh, the geography where the maximum casualties happened was the Indian subcontinent. When COVID happened, there was a very strong expectation that something along these lines would be seen again. You know, that uh, in very, very serious uh, levels, uh, concerns were expressed. How would a country like India, uh, with its level of income, its level of development, uh, the inadequacies of its health system, the shortcomings of its uh, uh, of its uh, medical uh, world, how will we deal with a challenge like this? Now, if you fast forward three years, actually, what we saw during this period was a country because of leadership decisions, was able to create COVID centers, literally by the tens of thousands, was able to manufacture ventilators, PPEs, masks, was able to produce vaccines, not just for itself, but for the world, was able to invent vaccines during this period was able to get two and a half billion shots in the arm and give you a digital certificate, which not many countries did initially. And not many countries, by the way, got shots in the arm also uh, with the kind of uh, uh, frequency and coverage that they should have. So that's one part of it, that we came through the I would say the public health challenge. Uh, not again, not without cost, not without challenges, not without losses. Because there would be nobody in India who's not in some way been impacted personally by the world. But there's another part of this which is less known and it's important that all of you appreciate it. Which is that during especially during the lockdown and the, the economic consequences that followed. There's a genuine fear of what happens when the informal sector shuts down, what happens when people go back to the villages, how do people deal with the, you know, the loss of income, the access of food uh, during this period. And that is where the results of nine years of better governance actually showed up. We were able to undertake the biggest food distribution uh, effort in the history of the world. That for two and a half years, I mean, till, till the uh, end of this, uh, till end of last year actually, the Indian system, the Indian government was able to give food to 800 million people was able to give food free to 800 million people, was able to put money in the banks, bank accounts of 400 million people, 
and all this would not have been possible had the changes which enabled them not already happened. That because people had were encouraged to get their Aadhaar number, because people were told go open your bank accounts, because people were told you know get digital, use your phone you know to, to link up with the real world. It is actually for those of you who may not have been to India in the last three years, the biggest change which has happened in the last three years is the faster digitalization of India. That so much more today was done because it could be done on a digital platform. In fact, even the vaccination, we would not have been able to get that coverage so systematically with, with no disruption had it not been for the fact that it was riding on a digital system. Now the digital system is not just meant for emergencies. It is also meant to improve daily governance. And that too we are seeing today. That uh, at this time we are constructing a social safety system in India. A social welfare program in India which envisages people getting easy health access with, with the coverage, with the affordability for it which promotes people getting pensions, which supports funding from government for people to build their own houses, which actually has enabled farmers by the millions, by the tens of millions, to get support for their uh, crop on a, on a uh, rotational basis. And where, you know, you read about schemes like they replaced firewood with cooking gas or they've connected up houses with, you know, with the power lines or right now what is the big change happening, which is uh, to connect up houses with clean tap water. Now, all this is happening because at the end of the day, there is the ability to deliver without leakage, without what leaves Delhi not reaching beneficiaries. And that is an enormous governance change which has today truly transformed India. That's one part of what is happening. There's so much more uh, that I think it's important you people should know. Uh, again, uh, a common complaint which any of us who lived abroad and we came back to India we would first make an infrastructure comparison. You know, I came from this country, I transited that country, and by the time I reached India, look at the state of the roads, look at the railways, how long did I have to wait, My, you know, see the airports. Today, the, it's not just the scale and number of infrastructure projects which are taking place. It is the fact that for the first time, under the Gati Shakti program, they are actually being done in an integrated manner. That, because again, one of our problems was different departments or different domains would do their own thing, sometimes at cross purposes with each other. Now, the fact that entire government of India is kind of working in a way, in a coordinated way for, you can say, a kind of master plan, that is making a huge difference in the state of uh, uh, infrastructure. Something similar is happening when it comes to human resources. You know, this budget which was just presented has uh, envisages doubling of our uh, nursing uh, schools. When we look today, even at the last eight years, at the number of new medical institutions, engineering institutions, IT institutions, Broadly speaking, you could say what was the situation between 1947 and 2014. Today, you know, you would see increases somewhere between 50% to 100% uh, of what was the achievement of the previous uh, tenure. It will naturally vary by, by domain. And so, 
the picture i present to you is really an india today uh, which is where the rate of the pace of change has picked up where there is a very strong determination that the next 25 years the years we call we see as an amrit ka these are years which will move us towards being a developed economy that we will become much more i would say central to what is happening in the world uh, certainly our presence in the world uh, our contribution to the world uh, will be uh, very much more uh, uh, in the coming years and in many ways i i hear this not from indians in india i hear this actually as foreign minister when i travel out you know i was in uh, new york uh, last september this we have this every every september all the countries gather uh, often prime minister heads our delegation he did not go so i was representing india i actually had foreign ministers of other countries wanting to do a function in new york in the middle of all that you and hangama which was going on because they said i we need some forum to say thank you for the fact that you sent us vaccines that's the kind of uh, uh, sense i mean many of you would be have seen in your tv sets uh, in the last two weeks what's been happening in turkey and syria the fact was within 24 hours of the turkey earthquake we were actually able to get a plane in we were able to get a plane in first uh, with a rescue team uh, we were able to very rapidly uh, set up a, a hospital field hospital there uh, if there's uh, on twitter for those of you who have the time and inclination there's a very interesting uh, i think it's a tr is a trt video there's a turkish uh, turkish video is a turkish video of an indian hospital operating in a school uh, um, you know they made it into a makeshift facility do watch it and you know as as indians or people of indian origin across the world i think we should look at this and then try and understand you know what has changed uh, today uh, in our country even even where fiji was concerned you know some years ago i think you had a tropical cyclone called yasa the mount now at that time we did what we could you know we we sent uh, uh, supplies we tried to be of help even today uh, i think uh, some of our uh, supported programs are trying to uh, do deal with the consequences of yasa even during covid you know we made sure that small countries who would normally have not figured in other people's calculation could have therefore been left behind uh, in the agenda they were remembered they were cared for and that's something which uh, we are again trying to do uh, with the g20 presidency uh, as you all know uh, this year uh, we are the uh, we hold the chair of the g20 uh, and we genuinely want our presidency to make a difference uh, and we want that to make a difference not through political headlines what we are interested is you know ask around the world what is it that is missing which part of your concern did not get on the table you know how do we voice that how do we bring the agenda to the right concerns and why we are doing it internationally is because we are doing it domestically that if you look at india's foreign policy today and i say this as someone who's finished 45 years in the business what for me has changed in foreign policy is today foreign policy is beginning to reflect lot of the deep socio economic concerns we have in india just like we are transforming the world within the country we want to also transform the world outside 
we know that you know it's not something any country can do alone certainly we cannot at our stage of development we therefore are looking at partners we are working with other countries uh, so that's really in a sense a caring but pragmatic uh, a realistic but at the same time a very helpful uh, view of the world and i think you will see the a lot of that today applied to the relationship with fiji so what i can promise you as people who live here that this relationship will certainly grow in the coming years it will uh, get uh, full attention uh, we will look for ways and means of intensifying our cooperation uh, of finding ways of uh, helping you know the community here uh, because for us again you know uh, indians abroad are both a source of strength and a matter of pride yeah. part of the reason why we take such extraordinary pains uh, during covid through the vande bharat mission or you saw in ukraine during operation ganga that uh, we feel today india must look after its people or people of indian origin to the best of its ability and our abilities have grown so this too uh, will will uh, grow in the coming years so once again i thank the high commissioner uh, for uh, for inviting all of you it's a real pleasure to see or meet all of you uh, i again want to say that it's for me been a very very pleasant experience and certainly when i leave tomorrow a very happy memory of uh, coming here i hope to come back uh, perhaps meet some of you in more uh, easy circumstances uh, but it's truly been a great pleasure thank you